Hi there, this is a short video on one of Cubase's best features, which is the offline processing. What the offline processing allows you to do is pick a piece of audio and add a type of processing to it without using any CPU. Now, if I bring up the CPU performance meter at the moment, let's have a look. It's bouncing around at 1 or 2%. Now, if I press play, we've got a drum loop here. Okay, now let's say I want to add delay to this section and reverb to this section of this drum loop. Now, there's several ways we can do this. The first way we can do it is by automation. So I could come in here and go to my channel um, automation area and pick in the inserts. And in this case, I've got a double delay and a reverb on my insert. So if I go in and pick my double delay, I can then pick the bypass feature, which if I now add this autom automation channel onto read mode, I can now come in here and activate the automation. So now, okay, let me just go in and check out the delay. We'll just adjust that a bit. Just make it quarter note symbol, maybe. A little tempo sync to it. Okay, and I want to add a crazy delay to this. Now, obviously, you would never use a delay. Well, maybe you would, the way I'm about to do it, but I'm just going to over exaggerate because I wanted to show you this uh, raw paper and reverb. It is quite chunky on the CPU, so you should see it going up as soon as I turn it on. See that? We're now using 15% of the processor just for one plug-in. So, and again, I'm doing that around the wrong way. Let me just bring that down, bring that back up there, right. Watch the CPU. Okay, so it's jumping up. Whenever that reverb is being used, it's jumping up to 15%. Which I guess isn't so bad because it's only really working when the audio has been passed through, if you notice. It's at zero percent, kind of, up to there. So if you look. Bang, straight up. So what it's doing, it's obviously a VST3 plugin, where the VST3 technology only uses the CPU when there's actually audio being passed through it. But, however, that's one piece of audio in a four-bar loop. Now you can just imagine the amount of plugins you're going to be using over, say, a six-minute track. And if they're all, and, and if you really like things like Rob Haben's reverb or whatever else it may be, that may just happen to be a bit heavy on the processing on your CPU. Sorry, you're going to run out of CPU really quickly. Um, okay, this isn't the strongest machine in the world, the most powerful machine in the world. It's a, a Pentium Duo. 3 gig. It's got 3 gig of RAM in there. But believe me, if I'm using plugins like that, we're going to run out quickly. So, now what I'm going to do is show you the offline processing method. So we'll just remove that. We'll just come in here and get rid of these effects. Okay, so, if you can remember, I wanted to add delay to this portion of audio. So I just select it, come up to audio, go to plugins and then I can select my plugin from in here for whatever it is that I want to do or in this case I can just hold down shift and right click and then it puts everything there for me so in this case I was using the double delay which is there I had it at 10% quarter notes and we had it on that I can preview it I can stop it and then if I hit process it asks me this 
project contains events that use the same audio materials as selected. Click new version if processing should apply only to the selected event. So if I was to hit continue here, it would apply the delay to each one of these. But because I don't want to do that, I just want it to this. I just want to add the delay to this section. I just hit new version. That's it. It's done. Same again with this one. Up to audio. Plugins. What were we adding? It was reverb. Rob Palin's reverb. There we go. I can't even remember what reverb it was, but I can preview. Okay, that was it. Process. It'll ask me the same question again. By the way, if you were to tick do not ask again and then select new version, it will automatically assume that that's what you want to do from every time then on. All of that, of course, can be changed in the preferences. Now, what's the benefit of that, you say? Well, look at this. It never goes above that, ever. All the processing's been done offline. Which basically means it doesn't use the it doesn't use the CPU in real time. Okay, just a little quick piece of information about how this works. It's not it's non-destructive. What that means is it doesn't actually affect the audio file. It creates almost like a ghost audio file with the offline processing only. And what that means is is that the original audio file doesn't actually get affected. It only works on the specific section or clip. Now, as you can see, if I press play. It's gone. Now the processing that I just done is gone. The reason for that is well, I went into the history and removed it, which is the next thing I want to show you, and is a real godsend. Which just I haven't met anything. I haven't came across anything else that's quite like it. If you come up here and go to edit, and as you can see here, there's a history button. If you click on that. What Cubase does, because it's non-destructive and it's not actually affecting the actual audio file, it creates the information here, which then allows you to remove everything. So I can come all the way back to what this project looked like when I started. And then if I come up one, I can see I created an audio track there. If I come up another one, I... what did I do there? Auto-destruct, that's an old audio file that I imported. Then earlier on, I'd imported a drum loop and another one. Or I moved the drum loop, I duplicated it or repeated here. You can see what you've done here. So I repeated it again, I repeated it again. I added a track, Zebra 2 track. I removed that track. Now this bit here is the bit that I showed you guys. Here, I added double delay to that clip there. There it is. You see it? You just remove it again. There you go. And then I added reverb to this clip. There you go. So what it allows you to do... One, it saves you CPU because the editing's done offline. Two, it gives you unlimited removal processes and unlimited history so that you can come in and remove any part of what you've done or go back to what it was like before. So again, you can remove or add it back. So that's a little bit about offline processing. It's, as far as I know, a feature that's unique to Cubase, but something that's very interested in and something that you should... If you do have Cubase, you should take advantage of it, especially if your machine's not the most powerful machine in the world. Now, I'm just going to put that back to normal, hit OK, and say that's it. Thanks for watching.